Today's subject, plain and simple, is adultery. Adultery is relaxed. It's not serious in America. It's promoted in Hollywood, television, movies, books. And we're going to see in the Bible, adultery is a crime. It's a sin. It's not something to be happy about. It's not something to, okay, just brush it under the rug. And we're going to go to Genesis 20 before the law. But God came to a Limiac, and that's a Gentile. It's not even a Jew. In a dream by night, he said to him, Behold, thou art a dead man. For the woman which thou hast, take it. For she's a man's wife. Now, Elimelech didn't know. Abraham said that she's my sister. But Elimelech had not come near her and said, Lord, will thou slay a righteous nation? I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was took her. Said he not unto me, she's my sister? Lord, is what she said. It's what he said. And she, even herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done it. I've taken her by their word. You may have taken somebody and you may have married them and they said that their spouse Committed adultery. When we get to Jesus saying that, you know, except for adultery, fornication. Clearly, Abraham and Sarah said, hey, we're brothers and sisters. And Elimelech acted on what they said. Innocent. Innocency. And God said unto him a dream, yeah, I know that thou didst is integrity of heart. I know what happened. I know the situation. God always does. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Look at that. Adultery is sinning against God. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch thee. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. Thou shalt live. Uh-oh. You mean if you don't restore him, there's death? And, that, and this is before the law. If thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die. This is not the law. This is before the law. In the integrity of Elimelech's heart, he took a woman that said, that, hey, he's my brother. She's my sister. Innocency. By the word of the people, the party involved. God says, you sinned against me. And if you don't return her not, death. Death. Therefore, Abimelech rose up early in the morning and called his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said, what have I what said unto him? What hast thou done unto us? What have I offended thee? All right, here, here's our context. That thou has brought on me and my kingdom a great sin. These are the heathen. They don't have the law. They're Gentiles. And Abimelech told his people and told Abraham that this adultery is a great sin. America doesn't call adultery great sin. They call it a profit making. And God told this Gentile with no law, death, death. Genesis 26. Genesis 26, 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, 
And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. Let me tell you something. Presently right now, reaping and sowing, something I did to my mom when I was a teenager, I am reaping today. Now, this week. Abraham sinned. He said, Sarah is my sister. Though they were brother and sister, half brother, half bro sister. No way is Isaac and Rebekah's brother and sister. Isaac wasn't even conceived when Abraham said, she's my sister. And look what happened. She's my sister. Abraham's reaping. For he feared to say she's my wife, least, said he, the men in the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass when they had been a long time that Abimelech, this is a different king, Abimelech is a title, king of the Philistines, looked out the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with his wife. Oh, sporting. <laughs> and Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of surely is thy wife. So sporting is a lot more than basketball, baseball, hockey. When Abimelech saw Isaac and Rebekah sporting, they were involved in a nature between husband and wife. She said, wife, how say thou she is my sister? And Isaac said to her, because I said, least I die for her. And Abimelech said, what is this thing that has done? One of thy people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou hast brought guiltiness upon us. Abundant charged his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So this Abimelech says, Death. The other Abimelech, God said, Death. Abimelech said, Great sin. Here, this Abimelech says, Guiltiness. <laughs> and if you touch her, the penalty will be death before the law, non Jewish. Gentiles. Leviticus 20. Or actually, Exodus 20, I mean. This is the law. Exodus 20. The law. The Jewish law. Exodus 20, verse 14. How more simpler can you get it? Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shall not commit adultery. Can you hang that on the theater doors? Can you put that on the title page of books or the bookstore? Can you nail that across the arch of the courthouse? Can you embed and teach that in your public schools? Instead of sex education? Can the churches nail thou should not commit adultery when even their pastors and priests have committed adultery? Yeah, I know the priests don't marry, but whosoever looking upon a woman unless after his heart has committed adultery with her. We're going to look at that verse. Hopefully. Can we teach our youth? Can we teach our age? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Is that so hard? Leviticus, still under the law, Leviticus. My mind isn't off other places today, I apologize. Leviticus 10, 20 verse 10. And a man that committeth adultery with another man's wife. There is a definition of adultery. You have had sexual relations with a woman involved in a marriage bed with her husband. If she is married and has sex 
with someone other than her husband. That's adultery. If he is married and has sex with someone other than his wife, that is an adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. How more clear can we get? And yet in America, and I don't know I don't know about other nations, but in America, adultery sells. Even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, Jewish. I don't mean the next door guy. That means Jewish. Every Jew was a, was a neighbor. Your brethren. Even Gentile. If a Gentile was living in the camp. Here we go. The adulterer and the adulteress shall be put on the movie screen. It's not what it says. The adulterer and the adultery shall surely be put to death. That's the law. No, we're not looking at David. We are looking at the law. We are talking about adultery. The Bible says, thou shalt not. Yeah, David did it. We all sinned. There are Christians and people in church today that commit adultery. We'll deal with that in a moment. Okay. It was a capital punishment offense in the Jewish law. And the way it read, it was a capital punishment of the Gentiles. In their heart and in their laws, adultery was grounds for, for killing, murdering, uh, not murder, uh, capital punishment. It's not murder, it's capital punishment. I apologize for that statement. She even the Gentiles had a law where unfaithfulness to a spouse meant death. The law Unfaithfulness to a spouse meant death. Now, Proverbs, I'm trying to do this in order. I didn't write it down in order. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. To keep thee from an evil woman, from the flattery tongue of a strange woman, Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man be brought for a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious light. There are women going out there targeting men and they're married. And that man that's caught in adultery, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? No. Can one go upon hot coals and feet not be burned? They're going to be burned. So is he that goeth unto his neighbor's wife. Whosoever touched her shall not be innocent. You're guilty. You're guilty. Verse 32, but whosoever committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. What's that say for the men that are in the ministry? That hold up a Bible. What about the Christians? Now for the Old Testament, he does it to destroy his own soul. A Christian soul is not destroyed. We'll look at that. But under the Old Testament, there was no sacrifice for adultery. 
A wound and dishonored shall he get not in America. A, a book signing. A top ten of the, of the best selling books. Defiles what the Bible says. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. You will always be known as the adulterer. Or the adulteress. Even after you die. It ought to leave a lasting mark <laughs> of reproach of sin. For jealousy is the rage of man. Therefore he will not spare it in the day of vengeance. That husband that you violated. There is nothing. Look. He will not regard any ransom. There's no money you can give. Neither will he rest content. He's not going to be content with you. Though thou givest him many gifts. Give him all the gifts. you. Give him all the money. Give him all the ransom. Give him whatever you want to give him. You violated that man. The husband. Try witnessing to him. Try telling him about Jesus Christ. When a Christian has run off with his wife. You've broken that marriage. Jeremiah. 3 9. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and stocks. You're committing adultery, not sexual, but idols and images. This is famous of the Catholic Church. When you worship wood, plastic, stone, metal, Dirt, sand, anything. And you worship it. You are committing adultery against God. Ezekiel. I hope I can read this. I write terrible. 23, I hope. 37. If not, I apologize. I ask you to pray for this family. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands, murder. And with their idols they have committed adultery and have caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass through them through the fire and devour. They've given their sons over to Molech. But see, adultery and idols. Idols and adultery. If you got an idol, you are committing. See, adultery is not just a male and a female. There's a spiritual adultery. Matthew 5 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, the law, Thou shalt not commit an adultery. We just read that, Exodus 20. But I say unto you, Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. I'm not going to speak much about this. If you go to my website under topics, we got a, a, a message about pornography. Well, let me tell you in brief. You don't have to get undressed to commit adultery. We read you can commit adultery with idols. You can commit adultery with a man or female. You can commit adultery by looking, by thinking, by in your heart. You know, when you gawk at that woman, you peek at that woman, you observe that woman. More than a, a glacial look. 
When you're on the computer, you're in the magazine, you're on your phone. You are committing adultery. And you may have never touched that woman. You may have never known that woman. Five thirty-two. By say it here. Whosoever has, whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. All right. Your spouse stepped out on you. Jesus said it can be a divorce. But if there is no fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever marry her shall that is divorced committed adultery. If you come to the point, all right, we're just going to split, end our marriage, we're done. And your spouse has not committed fornication. Your spouse has not been unfaithful, have commit, did not commit adultery, and you divorce. When you or your ex-wife remarry to somebody else, that's adultery, according to Jesus. Now, if the marriage is broken by fornication and dissolved because of fornication, a woman can go and remarry. A husband, uh, the man can go and remarry. But there's still that grounds of adultery there. Adultery is a serious Romans Romans 13 Romans 13 9 to the Romans Gentiles that are saved to the church for this thou shalt not commit adultery how simple is it well, it's under the law. No, it's not. Paul writing to the Gentiles that are saved in the Roman church. The same thing that Moses wrote to the Hebrews. Say it with me. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's that simple. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Look, number one again, adultery. Fornication. Adultery and fornication is the works of the flesh, not the spirit. Verse 18. The fruits of the spirit, 522. If you evolved in adultery and fornication, it is the, your flesh. Flesh is not good. Flesh is sin. Look at the... And let's look at this works of the flesh, 519. Let's look at it as, as maybe a neighborhood, shall we? All right, let's see who lives on this neighborhood. Adultery on the corner. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lipsiviousness. Oh, sorry, I can't pronounce that word. Idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, barrenness, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, rebellions. What a neighborhood. If you were to drive through this neighborhood at night, you would roll up the windows and lock the doors. 
And yet many of this you allow in your living room through the TV. You allow this into your family through the movie theater. First John one nine. If we confess our sins, thank God we're not under the law. If we confess our sins, Lord, I, I committed adultery. Lord, I fornicated. Lord, I murdered. Lord, I've got anger. Lord, I got strife. Lord, I got envy. Lord, I've lied. Lord, I've done this wrong. Lord, I've sinned. If we confess our sins, plural, with a right heart, right repentance, not just because we were caught, but because we were caught and we are sorry. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So don't hold, you know, you're going to go to hell. Like under the law. Under the law, adultery brought you to hell. Not in the church age. He is faithful and just to forgive us of sins, plural, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's all I'm going to say.